So uh, I'll take you through different levels of analysis here, uh, which is called thermal design hierarchy in the electronics. Uh, if we see chip level, chip level is nothing but we have to do a thermal characterization of the individual device. Uh, we have different criteria for the uh, thermal design. Uh, we have the maximum junction temperature limits and uh, we have to have a minimum and maximum uh, ambient temperature because uh, when you see the data sheet of any chips, we uh, they, they specify that this chip operating limits is from minus 20 to plus uh, 40. So uh, when we do the chip level analysis, we have to do both the mini, mean and max temperature simulation. Also, uh, they say uh, the store mean and max storage temperature. When the storage uh, temperature also, there are kind of simulations where uh, it is transient simulation over the period of time at different uh, mean and max temperature levels. So we do that kind of analysis as well. Uh, if we think of thermal characterization, what happens uh, every time from the miniature level to system level, we cannot put all the details. So we do a thermal characterization of the actual chip and then we build the uh, resistor models. Uh, there are different resistor models, two resistor model or star resistor model or Delphi uh, network. So based on the complexity required uh, in the analysis, we build those kind of uh, thermal uh, characterizations of the model. And they, these models are then used at the circuit level or the system level. So uh, if we consider the board level analysis, we don't do any package level consideration in the board level analysis. In the board level analysis, we uh, consider the uh, performance of the device when it is mounted at particular place. And then we use the network model in the board analysis. And then we uh, see the performance of the uh, package as a package, not the uh, junction temperature. So here uh, in the board level, we see the placement of each and every component and we see overall temperature of the board. And then we uh, see where it is exceeding the limit or it is under the limit. So here uh, the thermal consideration is uh, whether uh, it can sustain for the maximum solder temperature. Uh, then uh, when this, uh, you know, we do the soldering of any chip, uh, the solder temperature is more than you know 150 to 100 and uh, uh, whether it can damage the internal structure also uh, so we have to see that uh, we also do the uh, thermal stress analysis uh, of the layout of the uh, board and uh, we also do the detailed thermal conductivity map for the pcb layers so as i previously ex uh, explained there are different layers on the pcb uh, so uh, we do even that thermal conductivity map uh, for the PCB. At the system level, we don't see any uh, chip level or any board level uh, consideration. We see at the system level uh, performance and uh, then when device is you know, running, what is the overall thermal performance of the system, uh, what kind of solution is required when the PCB is mounted, whether we require more conduction or uh, more convection. Uh, that kind of things we have to do, we have to consider at the system level. Then again, we have to consider what is the maximum uh, exhaust temperature uh, as per the, you know, there are certain design guidelines for the system level design. So they uh, say the inlet and the outlet temperature should not be more than 10 degree. So again, here we have to see the exhaust temperature when there is a uh, force convection system. Also, we have to see the uh, outer shell temperature. If we see uh, any mobile, if we overuse it, uh, we will feel that uh, mobile becomes hot. So when the processing power is at its limit, what is the max outer shell temperature and the max touch temperature? So that kind of analysis we do. So basically when in the thermal analysis, we say that the device is dissipating maximum heat and then we calculate the max touch temperature. Again, uh, when uh, any kind of uh, CD players or DVD players and uh, uh, we do the analysis and when the media comes out of the system, uh, what is the max media eject temperature? That kind of analysis also we do. And uh, maximum coolant temperature uh, in liquid cooled system. When there are certain systems where we do uh, water cooling also, liquid cooling system also, uh, in that conditions, uh, we calculate the maximum coolant uh, temperature as well. When we do the chip level analysis, uh, there are certain considerations uh, which we need to follow. 
we need to consider about the packaging design and the thermal wires thermal wires is nothing but how we can dissipate the heat uh, you know by conduction then heat sink uh, so when uh, there is a uh, chip uh, we put heat sink over it in order to uh, cool it then thermal pads airflow required and the orientation so if we consider uh, the chip now uh, the uh, uh, right hand uh, top picture shows the chip where there are different uh, PCB layers are shown. One first layer is signal, uh, second is uh, uh, ground play, uh, plane, third is power plane and the uh, fourth one is uh, heat sink plane and in between that we have the uh, epoxy. So it separates the different layers and uh, so uh, when we consider the chip level design we have different uh, consideration and uh, uh, we require a different input data for the simulations. Uh, we require the power dissipation, the ambient temperature, and then we uh, have to consider about the natural or force convection and the also test board properties. So uh, here, uh, one of the example is, uh, I have compared between the natural convection and the force convection and its effect on the uh, junction temperature. We have the ambient temperature of 25. We have considered a microprocessor and which is leadless microprocessor and in the natural convection it shows the temperature of uh, junction as 157 when we put lead onto it its temperature is decreased to 132 when uh, with leadless uh, if we put the heat sink we get the junction temperature of uh, 89.4 and without leadless uh, just putting the heat sink uh, from 157 it reduced to 92.5 so that kind of uh, design consideration we have to consider. In the force uh, convection, the leadless shows 106 degree. So if we consider between natural convection and force convection, we have around 50 degree difference. So this kind of consideration we have to consider in order to design the thermally efficient uh, chips. Now, if we consider uh, the uh, PCB level or board level, now uh, we have to consider the number of layers of the PCB the percentage of copper coverage in each layer of the PCB, the suppressed material, the power dissipation, the tracing. So all this will have an impact on the thermal performance of any uh, PCB board. Again, as in the previous example, I showed natural convection and force convection. So that is pretty much, uh, you know, uh, making the difference uh, during design at the PCB or the system level. Again, uh, whenever required, uh, we put heat sinks in order to dissipate more heat and uh, uh, in order to, you know, lower the junction temperature of any components. Even the PCB is mounted in a such a way that there are different consideration while mounting the PCB. Uh, we have the mechanical wage locks where the uh, thermal conductivity of wage loss wage locks is more and we allow uh, more heat to be conducted from pcb uh, to the uh, outer chassis so that kind of considerations we have to consider uh, in the uh, board level in the system level we have a lot of consideration uh, we have uh, different heat sinks on the system itself so the big system will have more uh, heat sinks outside the system so if we consider any trans uh, transformers, the transformer will have oil cooling system along with the, if anybody has seen the transformer, it has fins outside of the product, you know. Uh, so that kind of consideration also we have to consider. The enclosure, uh, shape and size, material, the emissivity, radiation, all those things we have to consider. Uh, again, we have to consider the openings. The openings is in form of grills. So Again, grill has to be uh, specifically modeled. There are uh, different grill properties we have to consider while putting grill in the model. So there is a pressure drop and the flow. So we have to characterize grills. We have to characterize uh, all the components and uh, uh, we have to uh, consider all this. We have to, in the fan, when we have a force cooling system, we have to again consider the swirl the direction of the flow, the uh, fan flow characteristic, the volume flow rate versus, uh, you know, uh, pressure and the characteristics curve. So all these ten, uh, type of things we have to consider. Uh, we have whether the fan is exhaust fan or the internal fan or, for, uh, you know, 
uh, index fan so all these things so uh, at the system level uh, we have more consideration and uh, more challenges and here uh, uh, i have shown one example where we have the four cooling system and the different uh, pcbs so you can see there are a lot of pcbs a lot of components and uh, and this is the kind of uh, multi uh, processing unit uh, and uh, it it dissipate lot of heat and we have to uh, use lot of uh, cooling equipments a uh, lot of fans lot of uh, uh, you know consideration in the design itself so and this this is uh, you know kind of a thermal analysis at system level complex thermal analysis and uh, we have to have very good knowledge uh, prior to doing such kind of analysis but once over a period of course i think uh, uh, for you it will be better if we start from you know less complex geometry and then move towards the more complex geometry so at the end it is very much important uh, for the thermal uh, analyst to do a thermal analysis of any product at the uh, beginning level uh, than the uh, you know uh, doing the uh, analysis at the end where we don't have any scope to redesign it uh, temperature is the main cause of failure in electronics and the future electronics will be more faster and compact so uh, there will be more challenges for the thermal engineer and uh, thermal engineering design of any electrical or any uh, electronics product is uh, multi uh, faceted uh, heat transfer subject which involves all modes of heat transfer and ansi size pack is uh, you know uh, there to help us it has lot of features it has advanced solver technology with robust meshing option and the it is fast and accurate solver and we we can do the design at different uh, three different levels Uh, cheap board and system level again at the end i will say simulation is not substitute for the test test is mandatory to validate any kind of thermal design and during validation and uh, you know during design itself we, if we have one test data uh, it is more uh, you know feasible to build the uh, real thermal model and uh, we can do accurate thermal analysis